We bought this Lazy Spa Samaritz hot tub a year ago, and whilst the hot tub itself seems to have a pretty good build quality, nothing gone wrong so far, the inflatable lid on the other hand is absolutely dreadful. And a load of you out there are saying the same thing. So today I'm going to show you how I finally ridden myself of this dreadfully designed, woefully flawed inflatable lid that used to sit under this cover. Best way the makers of Lazy Spa sort this out because videos like this shouldn't have to exist. Now, quick plea before I start, I'm always looking for ways to make this channel more sustainable now that I'm doing it full time. And so if you like my content and would like to help me continue to provide it for free on this channel, I'd be grateful if you could visit my Buy Me A Coffee page and either support me by buying me a coffee or better still, with a monthly membership. I'm getting so many questions in each day now that I'm struggling to answer them all, and particularly those on Facebook and Instagram I tend to miss. And so you'll get a much more dedicated response from me and indeed the other members on my Discord chat forum that comes as part of the monthly membership. As does automatic free entry to my monthly giveaway, which this month, if you join my Buy Me Coffee channel by the 30th of July, includes one of my favorite tools, a brand new version of this Milwaukee M12 subcompact percussion drill driver along with a bit set. There's a link on my YouTube homepage and also in the description below this video and can I just say a massive thanks to all of you who have either bought me a coffee or signed up for membership since my last video. So back to the hot tub, I was lucky my inflatable lid lasted about eight, nine months before it began deflating. But I have a friend who bought a Samaritz recently and they've already had to start repairing air leaks and punctures. And this complaint is not just limited to the Sam Moritz. I recently asked the question on my community tab on my YouTube page whether it was worth doing this video and I had such a torrent of replies from people saying what a nightmare they're having with their inflatable lids. And it may not even be limited to the best way lazy spa range. So anyway, this inflatable lid acts like a heat insulator as well as support for the main cover which is important because I've found in the past the rain does leak through the central stitches on the cover particularly when the cover is sagging in like this. And apart from the systemic failure in the inflatable lid, bizarrely the inflatable lid has also taken in water, as you can see here, where I've enlarged one of the air leaks to drain out the water that's been gathering inside the inflatable lid itself. And what about the punctures? Well, it's entirely down to the design. As you can see here, mine has failed on these imprints which create the tubes in the inflatable lid. You get a puncture kit with the hot tub, which conveniently for Best Way doesn't include glue. Best Way makes some excuse as to why they can't ship it with glue. Although I had this industrial grade super glue bought for my son's model plane build, and I found that by cutting a small patch and gluing it down with this glue, under the pressure from a quick grip clamp, makes for a very good repair. You do need the compression for it to work, particularly given that all of these leaks are happening in this intricate area of indents. But so far I've repaired 12 leaks and would you believe it, that inflatable lid is still leaking. So I started thinking about how I could resolve this, particularly given that conveniently for best way, the lid is only covered by a six month warranty. And look, what a surprise, more complaints. So there are a few options as I see it. Option number one, is to buy a new inflatable lid. There are plenty of examples online, but with my inflatable lid at 176 centimeters diameter deflated, I couldn't actually find one big enough. And of course, it's out of stock at Lazy Spa. And at 65 pounds, I think a complete ripoff. When have you ever bought an inflatable mattress or a lilo that's cost that much? So let me know in the comment section if you've got one of these and you found an inflatable lid because it'll be useful for anyone else who's wanting to go down this route. Option number two is a new bespoke hard cover. Again, it's not that simple finding one for a circular inflatable hot tub. There are covers like this, but again, mine needed to be 216 centimeters in diameter. You can configure one yourself and get a quote online as I did from Happy Hot Tubs, and at 289 pounds and a nine to 15 week turnaround, I have no reason to think this wouldn't be a great option. And a couple of reviews bear this out, even though Rich at Happy Hot Tubs said to me the other day that they rarely sell their custom covers to inflatable hot tub owners because that 289 pound price is typically over half the price of the hot tub itself. In my case though, I had to buy the hot tub last summer on eBay at 180 pounds above its list price. So having paid pretty much 800 pounds for it, I could justify paying 300 pounds for a new bespoke cover. Begs the question though, I guess, how long one of these would ultimately last for, whether that's justified. Or option number three, you could do what I did and make a new lid for the hot tub. 
So I decided the cheapest and best option for me was to replace the inflatable lid with PIR insulation board. And I should point out my inspiration for this was Paul Stables, who pointed out to me in my YouTube comments nearly a year ago that he'd done something similar with his. More on this later. And so I bought two sheets of 100mm PIR insulation board from my local builders merchants for an eye-watering £92, including VAT. I also bought a couple of rolls of foil tape, although I haven't even got through one. So the plan was to preserve the inner skirt if at all possible, so as to leave the cover as unmodified as possible, I guess to cover my options for the future if, for whatever reason, this didn't go according to plan. And although this is what I ended up doing, it did give me a few problems that I'll come on to in a minute. Now, measuring is the trickiest part of this project. I needed the inflatable lid to measure for its replacement, so I mended the punctures as best as I could so that I could inflate it long enough to measure the diameter of the lid, which varied depending on where you measured it, between 1725 and 1765 millimeters. I say this was tricky, the measuring itself was actually pretty straightforward, but how large you make your replacement lid will depend on whether you want to do what I did, fit it into the skirt, in which case you're restricted in terms of how wide you can make it, or whether you want to cut off the inflatable lid skirt entirely, like Paul did, and simply glue your new replacement PIR board heat insulator to the cover itself, in which case you can make it much wider and therefore make it more efficient at keeping heat in the tub. More on this in a minute. Marking out the new liner. So I decided to make mine to 1765 millimeters in diameter, an error as it turned out. To get a perfect circle, I drilled a hole in a piece of perspex, pushed a galvanized nail through it, taped it down to the PIR board. You have to be careful doing this because if you rip tape off too quickly, you'll tear the foil off the board and pulled a marker pen attached to a piece of string around the board. To cut the board, you can do this by hand, but I use a reciprocating saw. I was sent by JCB a couple of years ago, but which I have to confess I've barely used since. I bought this new WorkPro blade set on Amazon for the job. The metal blade was the most ideal with its small teeth, but the slightly thicker wood blade made for a straighter cut with less flex in the blade. The next job was to shape the edge of the replacement inflatable lid. For ease, I thought I'd dispense with the curved profile that the inflatable lid had and adopt a simpler chamfered edge, which I found it really easy to cut with my old jigsaw, cutting to a parallel line drawn three centimeters in from the edge. How far you do yours, just experiment and see what works best. And you can see from this picture what a perfect fit this design gives you when you put the board back on the hot tub. The only problem is it didn't fit the inflatable lid skirt. Well, one piece fitted in easily, but it overlapped the middle of the cover by three centimeters, making it impossible to jam in both pieces against each other. Unfortunately, I didn't film any of this, but you can just about see here the black marker pen lines showing the overlap of each piece when inside the cover. I suppose looking back, the simplest thing to have done would have been to just cut three centimeters at this point off the diameter of each piece of board. Although this would have meant that they wouldn't have been symmetrical. And you might ask why I didn't measure the inner diameter of the skirt instead of measuring the inflatable lid itself. Well, I did do this, but the rigid bulk of that 100 mil PIR board puts pressure on the skirt and largely makes any measurements that you've made irrelevant when you come to actually trying to fit that board into the skirt itself. So I then embarked on a laborious process of trimming down the PIR board to try and get it to fit into the skirt and having reduced the oval rule diameter from 1765 millimeters to 1720 millimeters, with it still not quite fitting, would you believe, I finally resulted to curving the edge of the board, rather like with the profile of the original inflated lid, with my Stanley planar file, which I've previously used to file down insulated plasterboard. the board. One point about fitting your board into the skirt, assuming you decide to do it this way around, try rotating it around 90 degrees because I did actually find that the skirt dimensions aren't totally symmetrical themselves. So you might find putting it in one way, you just can't get the board into fit at all, but suddenly not rotating it 90 degrees and it fits in quite well. I've got to say this was a really messy job and a big cleanup operation was required in my tent and workshop when it was finished. So make sure you've got a decent vacuum and wear a mask at all times when cutting and filing that insulation board. With the two halves now fitting neatly into the skirt, I decided to coat the trimmed edges with foil tape so that no foam was exposed to the vapour inside the hot tub. This didn't actually take as long as you'd think it would. After vacuuming away all the foam residue from those earlier attempts to fit the board into the skirt, 
The final job was to stick a strip of the foil tape along the top side diameter of one of the new PIR sections. This meant that when I slipped the other section in, I could press the tape to the new section from above the cover and with the underside of the board taped and the sides, the liner was totally covered in foil, which should prevent or at the very least minimize any vapor getting through the foil into the foam itself. So in conclusion, what have I learned from this project? Well, it's not a perfect solution, but given the alternatives and the hundred pounds that I paid for this PIR board and the foil tape, it starts to become a bit of a no brainer. The size I had to reduce it to 17, 20 millimeters, external diameter, 16, 70 millimeters, internal diameter, more or less encapsulates the tub, leaving just a couple of gaps like this in the odd place. Most satisfying of all is that it sits well clear of the water and my tub is filled to the max level which the inflatable liner definitely didn't it used to sag down on a regular basis until it touched the water which kind of probably explains all that water being sucked up through the punctures i suppose inside the lid itself also pretty satisfying is that with a rigid inner rather than that inflatable one the cover is now actually much tighter around the tub itself it almost looks like a new cover and finally, when it rains, you don't get those awful puddles I used to get in the center of the inflatable lid. You can still do your daily chlorine dose by releasing four of the straps and lifting up a corner of the board. And it's still pretty light. My 14 year old daughter took this off the other day when she went in the tub on her own. The foil tape has tarnished along the central seam. Presumably the chlorine has done that. And that foil tape is very thin stuff. So I do worry it might tear and probably should have doubled or tripled it up. But you know, you could put four or five layers of this tape on and you're not gonna stop it ripping at the end of the day, but it would make it stronger. And there are, as somebody's pointed out, much stronger tapes out there that you could experiment with before making your replacement lid. However, if I'm honest with you, with those narrow gaps, I haven't quite made this replacement lid wide enough. And so you should do what you can to increase the circumference of yours. So I'm gonna leave you with a bit of a dilemma today. Do you slightly compromise the size of your replacement lid like I did in an effort to ensure that it fits inside that skirt? Or do you cut the skirt off like Paul did, which enables you to make a much larger, more efficient cover for your tub with a better insulating seal and arguably more of a dome effect for the rain to drain off? Come to think of it, you don't actually need to glue that PIR board down to the cover albeit if you don't do, then you've got two elements to take off every time you use the tub, which just makes it a bit more of a faff. So that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful and I wish you the best of luck with your new replacement lid. If you've liked today's video, it'd be great if you could give it a thumbs up below. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You could do that by clicking on the link here. And don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. I'll be back in a week's time with a bathroom extractor fan video. See you soon.